Well, and this is probably the most controversial Jeep. I'm just gonna go right to it, <laughs> right? People are really, you know, people are used to square and you've made it pointy and round. What was the thinking behind that? People are used to square, and you've made it pointy and round. What was the thinking behind that? Well, you know, what we wanted to do with the Cherokee design um, was really make sure that we had a design that was true to Jeep, but reflected the segment going forward and what we've seen develop in the segment. I mean, this is the largest segment in the US that's dominated by other players. It's a segment where we've historically performed incredibly well, and we needed to make sure that our new Cherokee um, was progressive and had everything it needed to be successful. And I have to say, you know, the feedback that I've received as this vehicle has become more known and people have seen it more often, is that um, the design is actually resonating very well with uh, a number of people. Now you've been at Jeep for a long time. You've been there, what, over 10 years now, right? I've been with the company for a long time. Yeah, um, where do you see Jeep and yourself and the brand 10 years from now? Is this the direction or is the regular direction or are you gonna kind of go into different directions? Because that's really what you're doing, you're taking it into a different segment, right? You're getting it beyond the yeah, normal Jeep no, people. Absolutely. And that's painful. Yeah, it's painful, but it's something very, very necessary for us to do. I mean, we are an SUV brand and I think um, not only should we be competitive in every SUV segment um, that's available for us, you know, we should be competing in the upper quartile in, in all of them. So sometimes it's painful, but that's, un, that's where Jeep should be, it deserves to be there. So, you know, if I, if I talk about our design cues into the future, the great thing about Jeep is, you know, we already have two kind of bookends. We have Wrangler, which is um, a timeless, iconic design. And then we have Grand Cherokee, which is, you know, much, um, much smoother, a more sporty design. So between there, that gives us a lot of places that we can go and we can explore. I think the most important thing is that it is a true Jeep. So what defines true Jeep? Well, of course, it goes beyond the seven slot grille. It talks about its capability and um, you know the other styling cues and all of them will fit into that DNA map. It feels very European to me. And I'm European and you're European, but you know, in America, it feels very foreign, I think, to some people. And at least, at least when they see it in a picture, not when you're sitting next to it. It's a different vehicle when you're sitting next to it. Absolutely, it's a completely different vehicle. I don't think um, that the pictures can do the vehicle justice. And you know, I have been really delighted with the reaction of people that have seen it on the road, because obviously, uh, pre-production, it's out on the road. It's being um, finally, its final testing has now been completed. And the, the reaction of um, the reaction of the uh, the U.S. guys and girls has been really, really strong, very good, particularly for trail hall, which this one is. So in 2015, there'll be a new Wrangler, which is kind of, you know, the DNA of the Jeep brand. Sure. And this year you put the diesel into the Grand Cherokee. Yep. You have a diesel in Wrangler in Europe, which you build here and ship across the ocean. We do. So does that portend the fact that there might be a diesel engine in Wrangler in the next gen? 